Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of three in our new series on extinction. Now, it's one of three. It's going to be a little shorter this week. We're trying to get ahead on some other stuff, but it's going to be awesome. Make sure you subscribe so you get all three of the episodes. You can also check us out on iTunes if you want to listen to this series. But this week, we're going to talk about how species go extinct and when did species conservation first start? Like, when did we decide that we wanted to start saving animals? And what successes have we had doing that? There's a lot of politics involved. In this. It's going to be pretty awesome. And of course, this is Test Tube Plus, so we're going to talk about bringing species back from extinction as well later in the series. But first, how is it that animals go extinct? You know, when, when did that start? We don't know exactly how many animal species have gone extinct over time. I mean, one could argue most of the things on Earth have died before now, right, in the millions upon millions upon millions of years of life. But we know that there have been mass extinction events throughout the Earth's history, about five of them, and we might be in our sixth. We have a whole series just on the extinction events, so you can check out the link in the description for that. Those extinction events uh, killed off all sorts of species, things big and small. You know, obviously, famously, the dinosaurs allowing us to kind of come up as the next big species, but there are five of them so far. The Ordovician Silurian killed off 85% of species. The Devonian killed off 85% of species. That's 85% of those living at that time. So these are, you know, millions of years in between. The Permian, 50% of all animal families and 90% of animals all over the planet, including the very famous trilobite. The Triassic, which killed 76% of all species. The Cretaceous, which killed 85% of all species, including the dinosaur. And 50% of all plants and animals in the sea. That's huge. But we're not actually going to talk about all that today. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about how animals in the modern age have begun to disappear. Animals like the dodo, the passenger pigeon, the West African black rhino, some very famous extinct animals. Because we're paying attention, we've noticed <laughs> that they're not here anymore. Extinction, and I giggle because extinction is a natural phenomenon. Yes, part of the reason we now talk about it is because we're paying attention to it. But species go extinct all the time without our help. The background extinction rate, or the normal extinction rate, exists. It's a normal rate that species will go extinct because of ecological factors. No humans are involved. Things like climate change or disease or because they were at a competitive disadvantage with their neighbors, you know, some other animal or species could have moved into their territory and took it over and this happened naturally. Survival of the fittest kind of describes that. The estimated normal extinction rate is measured in extinctions per million species per year. A study out of Brown University, it was published in the journal Conservation Biology, calculated the background extinction rate in 2014. They came to the conclusion that on average, before humans got in and started messing up the game, the rate was about 0.1 extinctions per million species per year. It doesn't seem like a lot, actually. It seems pretty low. They calculated this by looking at fossil records, uh, by family trees of animals and plants. They also included rates of speciation or you know, the natural creation of new species, which is pretty important because it kind of dampers an extinction rate. You end up with a new species. Putting that into context, a study in the journal Census of Marine Life, they counted 8.7 million species on Earth right now. That give or take, of course, 1.3 million. We don't know all of the species on the Earth. There's a lot. But just for this, because the study has some validation, let's just say that 8.7 million is the correct number. That would mean less than one animal per year would go extinct. Not bad. But that same study calculated the extinction rate and found the diversification rate has steadily increased over time, speciation rate, and that rate is higher than the extinction rates. So more new species evolve than species go extinct in the same period of time. And that keeps the extinction rate on average fairly low. But all of these calculations, they were done on fossil records, remember? Things that happened prior to us. And humans, we tend to mess things up. That same study from Brown University calculated the current extinction rate is 1,000 times worse than the pre-human number. Or to put it against the 8.7 million number we mentioned earlier, that's 870 species going extinct per year. And that is one estimate. There are other estimates that are even higher. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity puts it at 150 species every day. 
going extinct, but that's, that's really high. All of these calculations are based on computer models of extinction as we understand it. One estimate from the International Union for the Conservation of Nature currently lists 834 extinct species, period. 834 that we know have gone extinct, extinctions we can prove since the year 1500. Of course, year 1500, we were all like, printed books? Man, those are only 60 years old. I'm just, I'm just saying we're not rigorously exploring the world species, you know. That's all I'm saying. A study published in the journal Science counted 322 extinctions over the last 500 years, all directly caused by humans. And one natural way that extinction happens is through disease. Animals can go extinct through disease alone without human intervention, usually on an island where they can't escape that infection. How, but humans still influence this. Humans can cause extinctions through a number of different ways. Overexploitation, pollution, introducing alien species. Uh, let's break these down. So, overexploitation is stuff like overfishing or overhunting. You know, we used to have a native parrot here in the United States, the Carolina parakeet. We hunted that one, it's gone. There's also pollution. Uh, that's not just oil spills, which is a very visible reminder of pollution, but introducing dangerous pesticides, chemicals, and to places that animals need the resources there. So maybe we'll put pesticides onto a crop and an animal would normally have eaten that crop and now they're poisoned. Uh, this is why some people think all of the bees are having this colony collapse disorder in part because of chemicals that we're putting out into the environment. You can also have runoff from fields going into water supplies that animals use and that can affect their populations. It can also be noise and light pollution. We usually forget about those because they don't have a chemical component, but beluga whales have difficulty feeding and also breeding because of noise from oil and gas drilling in the Arctic. Light pollution messes up baby turtles in their journey to the ocean after hatching. We've talked about this before. And engines on ships in the Pacific create frequencies that interfere with communication for orcas. So this is something that's going on all the time. And in that last one, that study only came out this week. There's also introducing alien species, you know, invasive species, and those species will sometimes outproduce the native one, the local one, and they'll end up going extinct. One mongoose that was introduced to sugarcane growing islands to control the rat population has been responsible for seven extinctions in Puerto Rico alone. There's also other things like natural selection, say flightless birds. They're not used to having a predator. We come in, we are now their predator. Some say this is how the dodo bird went extinct. Habitat loss, this is the number one cause of species extinction today. Things like deforestation, destruction of wetland habitat, destruction of you know any kind of plains habitat. Anywhere where we're putting agriculture in broad areas, it usually has to do with habitat destruction. Also humans moving into that area. And this can have long-term effects over time because it creates a domino effect which is what's called co-extinction. An animal would die because a plant or animal it relied on went extinct. The host eagle, which is a giant eagle of New Zealand, it died off because its main food, the moa, which was a large flightless bird, it died off because humans hunted it to extinction. So if you look at it as a natural selection, we evolved, we overhunted it, and thus the host eagle went extinct. That is a domino effect. Another major factor we haven't mentioned yet is there are natural evolutionary barriers for some animals that keep them from surviving and they end up extinct. Example, sharks. They don't produce that often because they're an apex predator. They can't have too many sharks, they would eat all the prey and then they would all die. So evolution ended up forming this system where they don't reproduce that much. And since they don't reproduce that much, when we kill them, they don't replace themselves. There's also long gestation periods, like elephants, that has limited offspring. They have a many month gestation, I think it's like 22 months. And because of that, they don't produce that many elephants. It's again part of the reason being they're so large and they need to be able to live for long periods of time and if they overpopulated, they wouldn't do that. There are species with narrow habitat requirements, like the panda. It can only live in specific bamboo forests. And so as we cut down those forests, they end up with smaller and smaller areas. There are also larger animals that are easier to hunt, things that have cultural implications for us, like lions. We'll end up killing them, and then they don't replenish themselves. And that brings us to the term extinction debt. All of these factors, 
can go into animals going extinct. And these are both human caused and some are natural. And some are a domino effect. And that domino effect doesn't just stop with the host eagle because it's a chain reaction that can develop over time. Now, this is pure speculation on my part to illustrate the point. But let's say the host eagle also kept in check another species population. And since the host eagle is no longer there, that species blossoms. And it takes over another area causing an extinction. And that extinction was somebody else's food source. So then that other animal might die. This is what happens when things start going extinct. An extinction debt is the future extinction of an animal or plant based directly on events of the past. So some scientists are calling this extinction delay, and it can take decades or centuries for this whole thing to play out. So what we did is we hunted the MOA. But what is going to happen to the extinction debt? Who's going to pay that? We might not know for 100 years, if ever. But there's hope, because the conservation movement is working. People are starting to pay attention, and one study published in the journal Science found the extinction rates of mammals, birds, and amphibians would have been 20% higher without conservation movements. But how do we save animals from extinction? For that, you're gonna have to come back tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus. Let us know down in the comments if you had an animal that was either saved from extinction or that went extinct, and how you felt about it, one of your favorites. I mean, the dodo bird is an obvious one. Everybody wanted to meet a dodo bird. They just look so silly. Thanks for watching. I'm Trace. We'll see you tomorrow.